So here we're going to look at solving with a few more quadratics, and they're not really that hard, just a few extra steps, so some more examples if you need them. Um, I notice my first quadratic, and again when I'm solving them, I see my equal sign, and I'm noticing that I'm equal to zero already, so that's a good place for me to be. I'm sorted with that. So, my next question then is going to be, alright, um, since I'm already equal to zero, because that's the first thing that I've got to do, my next step is just to factor this. And I'm noticing that I've got an m squared and an m, but I don't have the three terms. So I'm going to think, is this maybe a difference of perfect squares? And it's not, because m's not squared over here. So my next thing to look for might be common terms. I notice that they both have a 4 in them. I can pull out a 4. And I notice that they both have an m. So here I can say 4m bracket. Well, 2m times 4m will get me 8m again, and 4m times 4m will get me back to 4m, so I just need to times, sorry, 4m times 1 will get me back to that. So now that I've gotten those written out, remember we set both sides equal to 0, both parts equal to 0, and we have 2m minus 1 is also equal to 0. So if I was going to just move this real quick. So we've got room. Um, if I was going to solve for this, I need to divide by 4 and divide by 4 on both sides. So my answer here is equal to 0. And over here, I'll plus by 1, plus by 1. 2m is equal to 1, then divide by 2, divide by 2. m is equal to 1 half. So I've got m is equal to 0 or 1 half. Remember, with quadratics, you usually get two solutions. Okay, taking a look at another example then here, same idea, I'm noticing that I've got um, a number at the front, so I might ask myself if I've got common factors, and I can see that I've got a 2, I can get a 2 out of that, and I can get a 2 out of the next one. I forgot something there, should be an m. So, if I factor out my 2, I get m squared minus 7m plus 6 is equal to 0. Well. Ignore the 2 out front, let's factor the inside. What times this to 6 and adds to negative 7? Well, that should be a negative 6 and a negative 1. 6 negatives and one more negative will get us to negative 7, 7 of them. Still equal to 0. Now that 2, in a way, um, you can kind of just ignore it, but if you wanted to know what we're doing with it mathematically, right, if we're solving for algebra, that's 2 times a bunch of stuff. So the opposite of timesing by it would be dividing by it. That's how we can ignore the 2, but what's 0 divided by 2? It's just 0 again, so you get m minus 6 times m minus 1 still equal to 0. And here, setting each of these equal to 0, setting both solutions equal to 0, we've got m is equal to 6, or m is equal to 1. Adding 1, or adding 6. And again, our two solutions. This next one. Again, just role modeling some trickier problems here. I see that I've got a squared term. I'm asking myself, is this a quadratic? And I notice there's not all three, so my next question might be, is this perfect squares? And in fact, this time it is. And the reason I know that is because I'm dealing with a 9, which is the same as 3 squared. And I'm dealing with a 64, which is the same as 8 squared. And the Q is squared, so all of these are squared. So if I wanted to, reminding myself that 3 times 3, or 3 squared, is equal to 9, I can write this first term as 3q squared, because if I expand that back out, 3 squared is going to go 9, and that's going to become q squared, so I'm just writing it like that. And this is 8 squared is equal to 0. And for perfect squares, difference of perfect squares, I have to take, um, remember it's the first one with a plus and the second one with a minus, but the things are the same, so I'm going to take that 3q and the 8, and the 3q, and the 8, and those are both equal to 0. And again, the reason I'm using 3q in my brackets here is because that is the part that's squared. It's not just the 9 or the q. I have to think about this whole object at the front as something squared and put that down the front, and the whole object that's squared at the back, put it down the back. And now that I've got this, 3q plus 8 is equal to 0, or 3q minus 8 is equal to 0. So that's going to be minus 8, minus 8. 3q is equal to negative 8, divide by 3, divide by 3. q is equal to negative 8 over 3. And over here, we'll see we'll get pretty much the exact same thing. 
Plus seeing eight to both sides. Except for it's the opposite sign. So we've got eight over three. So Q is equal to positive or negative eight over three. And you might actually see the answer written like that. Plus or minus eight over three is equal to Q. Another way that you can write the same thing. So just remember that when you're noticing numbers in the front, ask yourself if you've got a common factor might help you out. And if you only see two terms, it's really important to just think about it. Is this possibly a perfect square or is it not? And you'll end up with just one set of brackets.